Hey YouTubers, well this is my 2005 L3400 with Bradco backhoe. Got the LA463 Kubota loader on there. And uh, this one to make a video. There's been several people and this one guy has like videos under three different screen names or maybe four, I can't remember. But anyway, he's trashing the rear valve on the, on the Kubotas. Ah, well, I was wanting to show him a couple things and explain about the tractor hydraulics. Uh, made this video like five times trying to, so it don't come out that I'm, uh, you know, being uh, rude. <laughs> so, anyway, um, I bought this tractor and my plan was to keep it. I do excavation and I do it for my company. I got my purchase paperwork, put everything on it together in a folder. I got my manuals, my original Kubota tractor manuals and even more manuals. And this is an important thing. If you want to keep a tractor or vehicle for a long time, which is what I'm on, buy a manual. I think it's like 40 bucks. It might have been on the outside 50 or 60 bucks. I'm kind of sure it was 50, but this is the same manual they use in the uh, shop. Okay. And we get into the hydraulic. Ah, my fingers won't pick up a page. It talks about the circuit. How our things work, and it gets in there. It shows now. This is a diagram. This is your lift arm, and this is your cylinder. Now you, you know, the three-point hitch only raises, and then it floats down. And this is your uh, leave-off valve. You, you can, depending on the weight of your implement, you can speed up or slow down the the rate of fall. And then your valves underneath of it. Okay. Now this is the valve. Uh, there's a linkage thing in here. Uh, it says it's uh, number 10 here, position control rod. Now this is adjustable. Okay, this goes from your lift arm back into your your valve and your poppet spools. This tells the tractor where the arm is and if it needs to put more fluid to raise it or to release it to lower. Okay. And this goes through a very detailed analysis of, oh, you know, analysis, but an explanation of how these all go together. And then it gets into the front block. But I was on the shade. Now, where it was shown is right there. This is that the relief control. You can change how fast your three point lowers in supply line. But anyway, there's a lot of stuff here. And the left cylinder is under there. And apparently the guy had problems with that and got it fixed and then he said he's having problems with his loader well your problems may have been in your loader but anyway let's go through one of the big problems this is your lower hydraulic block on our shade here I'm trying to find this page it talks about flow rates and, and all kind of stuff here but there's a diagnosis page in here implement does not rise First thing is control linkage improperly adjusted. <laughs> Adjust control linkage and it tells you how. Okay. It also says talks about the poppet spools and the uh, you know that the valves malfunctioning, uh, relief spring and linkage improperly assembled or damaged. Implement does not rise noise. Implement does not reach maximum height. Implement does not lower. Implement drops by weight. Implement hunts, moves up and down. Talks about the them darn pop up pop it valves again the controller rings but anyway it gets into a lot of that there's also specs here for pressure and flow rate now both of these are important if you don't have the flow rate or you don't have the pressure you, you're going to have issues okay now this is the Kubota uh, block and it shows down here number three relief valve you take that and it's it's adjustable now and it shows later on here in the chapter how do you adjust the, the system's hydraulic pressure on uh, the end forks. But anyway, there's two important things. Uh, there's flow rate and hydraulic pressure, both of which needs to be set up. So whenever I got my aux valve put on my tractor, I left them do it. Okay? <laughs> I left them do it. I got this aux valve here. And uh, it has a third line, which the first.
front valve does too. But it's like a dump line that dumps all the, the leftover fluid that's not used. The low pressure return basically it goes back into the fill port. I was at one uh, commodity dealership and the guy didn't even have uh, the little caps on there, so the rain's getting down there. You got water in there, that's bad. <laughs> okay. So anyway, on these smaller tractors, the the trans the, the transmission and the differential is all open, and it takes almost eight gallons for this 3400 to fill it like seven something. I, I'd have to remember, but uh, it obeys the gears. Okay. Now underneath it here, I hope you can see this. There's a big suction tube that comes from back here, and these two is the uh, uh, lines that goes to my uh, oh ox valve. But a big suction tube comes up to it and goes through the filter, and I write the date and the time on there. So, which it's due, very due again. Um, it goes through there, comes up through this hose and goes into the hydraulic pump. Now this is a double hydraulic pump. Part of it goes to the power steering and your main pump goes to your uh, uh, your influence, right? Now that could even be worn or not putting out enough. That's why you need a pressure and a flow rate on both of them to make sure that pump's good. A friend of mine lost this because they said they found a gallon of water in his, trans, in his transfer case. Uh, it was twelve hundred some dollars for a new pump. Yikes, yeah. But anyway, it comes back off of here and goes down. And then underneath of here is a setting where you can go in there and you can set the relief valve. Now there's three lines to most of these implement. And there's two that goes to the back, but uh, of course the third one goes returns through the overflow thing. Kubota makes a draft control and I think a second valve down here, but there was a lot more. Okay, so it'll be like you, you know. I think that up here is where the draft control goes, and there's just plate changes or something. You can get a a second uh, aux valve on there, but that costs a lot more. But so I got the generic one. So anyway, there's a high pressure feed that comes off of here and goes up to the valve. Controls your loader. This has priority. You do anything with this, nothing else hydraulically will work on this tractor. High pressure comes back, and you see this one used to go in here, but this has been spliced onto here. So this is my high pressure feed to my aux valve, and then it comes back and goes in here. And then, only then, does it go. And, and one of the, this one is the low pressure return. Okay, this is for when you float it or you dump something, and the, the, the excess fluid gets squirted back through here. And okay, but anyway, when it returns from my aux valve. It goes back in here. So it comes out, goes to the loader valve, comes back through, goes to the aux valve, come back, it comes back, and it goes in here. Now, if you have a backhoe, you have two lines back there that you'll hook together on your Kubota. Okay? You have to have them hooked together, or you're going to get hydraulic. Uh, ain't going to work. Okay? <laughs> so, anyway, this goes back in, and then only then does it feed back and go to this valve. You'd think that the three point, because that's the whole point of the tractor with hydraulics, is for the three point implement to work, but it is the last thing that gets power. Okay? So, if you're getting noise, weird suction noises, or something, you need to check your fluid because it, it will accumulate water. You won't see it, you won't know it, but every few years you should change it, even if you don't get the hours. It's like the diesel fuel. You don't let two, three year old diesel fuel set around because you get algae in it. And when I priced an injector pump and injectors for mine, it was over four grand. I'm only putting good diesel in it. I will dump it out and waste $20 in diesel that's a year old that, you know, before I ruin an injector pump. Okay? <laughs> too, too expensive, okay? So anyway, if I do anything with this valve, nothing back there will work. If there's something wrong with either the volume or the pressure or something in this valve, because there's a power beyond module that lets it transmit to the next implement, okay? If anything is wrong, even if the linkage ain't greased it right sometimes, you know, so the valve's not moving right, uh, 
will cause you problems. If you're pulling on one side to extend and the other side ain't pushing in to let the fluid come out of them cylinders that you're extending, uh, it'll create pressure and that can cause you problems. Okay, So make sure this is working right. Get a service tech to check the volume and pressure of your hydraulics. Okay, so in, in, in real world, say I have my blade on, I, I'm, I'm snow plowing. There's one place on the development, it's like a triangular intersection. It's a three-way intersection and it's huge. So once I get it all pushed over, I go back and forth. So uh, I'm backing up, I'm pushing snow backwards, right? I pull my lever up to raise up my blade. I, I take the shuttle, throw it in forward, and I, and I drop my bucket. Well, if the three-point hitch ain't all the way up, it'll stop. Halfway up, two-thirds of the way up, 99% up, it'll stop. And whatever I'm doing with my loader, I'm getting it down, leveling the bucket, and pushing the snow. When I stop using the loader, I'll, I'll feel the tractor bump the last little bit. Like the, if it's a halfway up, it'll come all the halfway up and stop. So if you use the loader valve or there's something wrong with it, you will have problems with the three-point hitch. Now, my hydraulics goes to here. i got to bungee this up, and then two lines goes to the backhoe. Okay? If there's any problems with any of this, okay, if any one of them valves has an issue, that's going to have problems. It's also the last one, and it collects the most garbage in the system. There's a strainer on this backhoe, but that don't mean that, you know, it catches everything. Uh, I found out about the strainer on it because it was in the manual, but mine leaked when I first got it. Is there anything wrong with the tractor? I bought the tractor loader, and then I went back for the aux valve in the, uh, the uh, backhoe. And they sold me on the Bradshaw backhoe because it wasn't that much more, and it was a lot heavier. He said I could pick up the back end of this uh, tractor with it when the buckets are fully out. And unless I have my bucket pushed down into the dirt and locked, I, you know, I can do that. But And it digs. It, it digs beyond the bucket. I broke one of the teeth off and had to re-weld them on there. I said, you can't weld that back on there. It's made out of blah, blah. you got to get a whole thing welded on. I'm like, well, if you can weld it to the bucket, because I broke the shank, not the actual tooth, I just welded it back on it. Anyway. It's held. <laughs> I dug more tree stumps out with it. Yeah, digging tree stumps abuses your back hair. But anyway, that's what I'm trying to tell you. If you use the loader valve, everything else is dead. Like if I angle my plow and I'm raising it at the same time, because the angle cylinder is on, you can see my plow video how I got it rigged up. The angle cylinder runs off of the aux valve. Like I said, it got that third low pressure return that goes down in there to the channy. And I, there's a swivel in there and I just got to screw it out to add fluid to it. Now, another thing that may be causing you problems, I noticed mine, if I'm, if I got the left front downhill, you know, the, the suction is on the right side at the rear. I noticed that, uh, oh, uh, sometimes it'll make a whole noise because I think it's, it's sucking in air. You don't want to watch that. Now here, now see how I hope you can see this. So my fluid, it's starting to get dirty. That fluid's a few years old. I mean, I, I haven't been working, doing a lot in construction. I got this tractor, it started paying for itself, and then, well, for various reasons, it kind of went downhill. But, uh, so I, yeah, the tractor hasn't been used as much as I feared it would be. But when that fluid gets three or four years old, and especially the regular UDT, use the super UDT, especially if you live up north, where there's winter and moisture and stuff like that because the, the, the fluid is hydro whatever it absorbs moisture when it starts getting foamy or darker colored get rid of it and I know man that that, that super UDT is like 22 to 24.99 a gallon and those eight gallons or 7.6 gallons or something like that in here yeah and then the filter you're looking at you know several hundred dollars but it's twelve hundred dollars just for a uh, pump Mine will probably get changed this year. It's, it's a little early hour-wise, but time-wise, it's on there. I mean, if you was working this tractor every day you, you, or you was on a farm, you'd do it. But mine, I start up every week and run it around. And sometimes it's months before I actually do any work with it. But uh, 
watch that. Now this thing's you got to get these perfectly level. You'll notice mine's over four, even though the front end's a little bit up. Well, I overfill mine a little bit, and I understand I may have some leak issue somewhere in the, the chani, but the thing of it is, these are so touchy. If you go a little bit up or a little bit down, you'll start sucking air because it's really. If I park mine in my garage, uh, it's a little the garage floor sloped a little bit for the carbon monoxide at that building code. You gotta have your your garage floors going down a little bit. Man, that's starting. To... Anyway, there's some painting in there, but uh, the garage floor sloped down just a little bit, and I notice that coming down off of there. Uh, I try to keep it at the top. They say to keep it in this little there's a little ring in there, and I can't even see that. So yeah, I'm due hydraulic fluid. Anytime it gets cloudy, dump it, get rid of it. You got bad fuel, old fuel, get rid of it. It's not worth it. Modern diesel, it don't keep but a few months, and I notice I start blowing more black soot out of mine. Um, but that's it's the nature of a diesel. But I don't mess around because fuel injector pump uh, is not worth it. If you get old diesel, don't run it. That's, that don't, don't, because it's not worth it. But anyway, that's the Kubota, that's the owner's manual and stuff, and I hope that helps someone out, because these are decent little tractors. I've had to put a new battery in this one, and my top link rusted, which it ain't on here now, but anyway, my top link rusted fast, but that's because I didn't play with it, and I snow plow and get salt and water and all kind of stuff down in there, and it kind of kills it fast, but yeah I get sold on this I gotta sand that down and touch it up rust is the enemy of everything guys but anyway that should uh, you know teach you a few things about the hydraulic system Since everything has its turn everything has its uh, pecking order and sometimes problems with one thing can make you chase all kind of other things but check and make sure that can, that uh, rod is is tight and adjusted right because that will cause you all kind of issues. And it's not if it's a green or a blue or an orange tractor. I bought mine because they beat the price. And so far it's been a pretty good little tractor. Even though I've used it all the time. <laughs> but anyway, hey, y'all have a nice day. Later.